Welcome to the Nonprofit Show. We are so glad you're here. If you joined us for a green room chatter, you might have thought it was the Travel Channel, but we were having a great conversation. Um, our guest, Zach Brown, is here. He is CEO of Nonprofits HQ. I had the great honor to be connected with Zach through a mutual friend of ours. But Zach's here to talk to us as using tech to amplify impact. So He's going to introduce you to your newest team member that you might not even know you had yet. So stay with us. Also want to say thank you to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. She's still traveling, doing the great work that she does, working with a client. And we'll be back here tomorrow for Friday, but I'm leading Friday Eve. I'm Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. Huge shout out of gratitude to our amazing sponsors that allow us to continue these conversations. Nearly a thousand episodes now. Just telling our guest, Zach, I think in March of 24, we'll hit a thousand. But again, thank you to our sponsors, which include Bloomering, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. Most of these companies have been with us on this a thousand, I almost say mile, but <laughs> a thousand episode journey. It's been a lot of fun. If you missed any episodes or you want to go back and listen to what Zach's about to share with us here, you can find us on streaming broadcast, podcast, and you can still download that app. So go ahead and scan that QR code. All right, Zach, I am so glad you're here as a guest again um, shout out to our, our mutual connection that connected us, which I've learned now was another connection from, from another yet mutual connection. So that is how we, we work in networks. But we have with us today, Zach Brown, CEO of Nonprofits HQ. Welcome to you, Zach. Thanks so much for having me. Um, it's really cool what you guys are doing with the nonprofit show and it's uh, the accessibility to information around nonprofits and different things like this. It's really cool to see initiatives like that. Well, thank you. And, and again, just an honor to have you. Before we jump into the conversation using tech to amplify impact, tell us a little bit about yourself, Zach, and a little bit about Nonprofits HQ. What, what are you doing in this space? I'm curious. Yeah, definitely. So my background, my entire professional career has been in tech and software engineering, and then as an engineering leader. And I've always had an interest in figuring out how to use that skill set to do something good, something genuinely good. Um, and throughout experiences of uh, volunteering with nonprofits and learning about different organizations, and then uh, working on my own nonprofit initiatives, I finally found that crossroad, that, that opportunity to bring uh, powerful tech to this this area, this market that's generally kind of underserved when it comes to emerging technologies and accessibility to this tech, um, and that is nonprofits. It's an entire segment that's dedicated to doing good, to helping people, to accomplishing great things through community and collaboration. And so that was a really, really exciting area to kind of focus on delivering our technology. And that's what led to uh, starting Nonprofits HQ. You know, it's a management platform and uh, professional services that kind of all-encompassing stop for nonprofits to help them streamline their operations, manage their day-to-day, -day, basically focus more on their mission and achieving their goals um, and less on the kind of operational overhead and kind of unifying software and tech and things of that nature. Well, thank you. And for someone who wants to help other people do more good, I think you found your niche. That's, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing in this. Well, Zach, let's jump right in because we have a lot to learn from you. And ironically, I have to share yesterday's guest. We had Jennifer Oliva, managing partner and CEO of your part-time controller, join us. She talked about the winners of 2023. And she said, we would really be remiss if we did not talk about AI, right? Like AI is definitely the winner of, of this year. You're going to talk to us also about how we can streamline our operations by using artificial intelligence. Nerd out with me on that. And just so you know, that's a compliment. So <laughs> talk to me about what that means. I've, I've worn my nerd badge proudly my entire life. So I yeah. absolutely take that as a compliment. <laughs> um, Yeah. So, you know, AI or artificial intelligence is a a tool that we can em employ or deploy in different industries to help us kind of streamline our stuff. We see it happening in big tech. We see it happening in like these for-profit industries everywhere. 
but we don't see, or there's not enough attention on utilizing that technology in the nonprofit space too. You know, specifically for nonprofits, artificial intelligence can give us kind of that extra edge to help us become more efficient with our organizations, uh, be able to do more with fewer resources. A lot of uh, nonprofits right now are reporting, you know, a large increase in demand, um, uh, less, uh, a harder time raising uh, fundraising, uh, fewer volunteers, staff, things of that nature. And AI can help kind of fill that gap. You know, we can use that technology and areas that are really common for AI in the uh, nonprofit operations space or areas where you can be really impactful are like data management. You know, yeah. we can we can build these models, we can build these uh, algorithms to help us analyze our data, whether we're talking about donor data so we can uh, build predictive uh, insights and marketing to help uh, identify our most active or most likely donors in a given space or in a given market. Or we can use it to identify performance of our programs and the services that we've offered over the last, you know, whatever period it is that you have data for. And we can use that to generate insights and to, to, to help us figure out what the next step is for our organization, what the, the next best thing is for us to focus on. Uh, and it helps us kind of like, uh, it's like another, another brain, another very powerful brain uh, that we can utilize in our organizations. Uh, data management is also just kind of one facet of that. You know, you can you can take care of resource allocation. You can help it, AI can help your organization make decisions on programs, on areas to focus. One of the uh, things that we're playing with at Nonprofits HQ right now, kind of, I say playing with, right? Uh, that's not official marketing verbiage. <laughs> uh, Researching, <we> are... <laughs> yeah, exactly. R and D. Uh, I think we refer to it. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and we're experimenting with this uh, tool, extending one of our AI models to help analyze the uh, statistics and the data for the specific community that our customers are in to help them make decisions for their programs. So for example, one of our organizations is a group that helps feed um, homeless population and uh, low-income families in their area. So we're kind of using that as a base for this new uh, section of our AI, of our product to understand what that actually means in that specific community. What is the homeless population size? What is the low income size? How many people don't have access to healthy, wholesome nutrition? How many people uh, would really benefit from the services? And then beyond that, how do we reach those groups? How do we reach those people so we can amplify our impact and we could serve more organization or rather more people? Um, and so AI can help us kind of collect and analyze that data in a very quick and inexpensive way. So we can generate this kind of strategy or path forward. That is fascinating. I, I don't speak the same language or same level of language as you do. Um, pure curiosity question, Zach, how much um, is AI able to be culturally sensitive? I, I say that because, you know, when we think of food banks and I, I've worked with an amazing food bank in my local community at, at some point in my career, we really found out that we had a very large Latinx, um, Hispanic population. The food that was being donated wasn't necessarily the food that these uh, clients, participants, recipients, I should say, receiving were accustomed to using, accustomed to cooking with, accustomed to eating. Like it wasn't just a part of their, their normal kind of like day-to-day -day nutrition. How... How does AI play a role perhaps in that culturally sensitive, I call it culturally sensitive data to say, okay, if we're working with a San Antonio uh, food bank, we need to take into consideration the demographic. Are, are you following me? Like how does AI play a role mm -hmm. in that? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a really good question too. And actually a really, really cool area to highlight the capabilities of AI um, in our missions as well. So one caveat, though, or one one thing I want to want to point out before we jump into that is there is some this idea of uh, this need for ethical and uh, responsible AI. You know, we're building these AI models, we are uh, extending them, and we're training them on large data sets. But those are human created data sets, which okay. means a lot of the content that uh, you run into the potential risk 
that you're creating biases and you're creating these, you know, these less than ethical uh, outcomes that are not intended, um, but right. they are present in a lot of the data. And there are frameworks and things that you can do to clean that and to um, kind of remove those biases. So when we do start talking about looking at specific type or specific groups of people and specific cultures, we do have to make sure that, you know, the information that we're, we're using to build these models and to build this AI isn't just generalizing, you know, oh, sure. this is a Latino area. So all we want are jalapenos, you know, or things, you know, things of that nature. So um, that being said, assuming we're, we're, we're doing this in a responsible way, AI provides tremendous benefit for that because as humans, we can consume a lot of information and process a lot of information, but AI can do it much faster and much more information. So we can look at our trends and data for those specific communities. You know, you can look at things like um, grocery store sales, what types of items sell really well in the area, what types of food ingredients, uh, okay. what are the popular uh, food or dishes that are served at large events in that area. And you can really get to that granular level because ultimately what it comes down to is consuming, cleaning and understanding data. And your AI is able to help you do that faster and more efficiently so you can be more impactful in what you're doing. But it helps us get to that really granular level that would otherwise seem relatively impossible. Um, sure. And take ample time, right? Like it, it would take a lot of time. I know we can go down this conversation so much further. I feel like we're going to have to have you back on because we're just scratching the surface. Talk to us about task automation, how AI can impact task automation specifically. Yeah, so this is actually probably one of the lower barriers to entry in adopting AI in your organization. We all have tasks that we have to do, whether they're administrative tasks for building reports or scheduling things, or their cost savings. So we're understanding what we're spending on our programs, what our programs cost to deliver to our customers or our, um, our people. And we can use AI to, to automate those tasks and, and understand what it is that you're actually doing. So a good example of that could be, you know, every, um, every so often I wanna check in with my volunteers for my organization, see how they're doing, see if they need anything. So our AI, Toby is what we call it, uh, he is able to also just take those tasks that would be you know, repetitive, that are super important, but are also kind of a time suck and handle those tasks by himself. Now, you're always gonna have this need for human input and human interaction. The AI can, can understand and can collect information and generate insights and data and things for you, but a human is still always going to need to kind of guide that process or, or um, be involved in what happens next with it. Um, yeah. So there are a lot of things that you can do that computers already do uh, task automation that you can enhance with AI, which basically just gives it that really good understanding of what that task is, what you're doing. You know, yeah. our, our AIs are trained specifically on nonprofit operations, specifically on nonprofit laws and uh, governing regulations. And so we're able to use that very specific knowledge to ensure that, you know, something as simple as reaching out to a volunteer to ask how they're doing stays impactful, stays compliant, stays um, useful. And, you know, we can automate so many things and free up so much time because nonprofit operators have a lot to do and a little bit of time, very right. valuable time, often very limited time. And so if we can deploy software uh, or AI that helps relieve some of that time so they can focus more on their uh, mission, I think that's that's definitely a benefit. Definitely a benefit. Uh, a couple of things, and, and, and I know I mentioned this yesterday with our guest, but we've had uh, another gentleman, Sean Olds, on from Boodle talking about AI. And he says, you know, everyone thinks that AI is coming for your jobs. And I'm here to tell you it is, but for the parts of your job that you really shouldn't be doing anyway, right? Like talking about that automation, talking about, you know, leveraging AI to create, you know, this efficiency. 
And then um, Jennifer, again, yesterday from your part-time controller mentioned, you know, from a team of over 600 employees, they only have five accountants. And that's because they are leveraging AI for their task automation. And that is just fascinating to me, Zach, because I look across our nonprofit sector and I often see that we are, we nonprofits are often the last to adopt AI, last to adopt technology in general, right? So we talk about this, but then let's talk about the learning curve because you've you've totally nerded out with me and I appreciate it. I I, I really do. There's so many nonprofits still doing the same old thing, right? Year over year, not changing much. Um, how do we even begin to adopt to this? Because I feel like there's a flood of options that we could consider, but how do we even get started? And then how do we get started if there's anyone on our team, especially of a decision maker, who's hesitant? Absolutely. And I think that was a really good segue into this, this part as well, which obviously you've been doing this for a while. Um, but, uh, yeah, so like AI is a very, by nature, a very complex scope of things, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just one particular thing. It's not just chat GPT, right? Which is an LLM or a large language model. And, uh, AI is also though, not, it's not sentient yet. And we're still a, a ways from that, from a model or a computer being able to learn and think and process like a human without a large amount of data and examples to show how it should happen. Um, AI is mostly tokenized. So it uh, generative AI, for example, it's, it's returning what is probably makes the most sense for what it was prompted uh, based on all of its training data and set. So in terms of it um, being able to supplement what you're doing in your day-to-day -day tasks, that it's amazing for, but we just have to learn how to do that. We have to learn one, how to identify the benefits of that. And then two, how to actually act on that. So a lot of things that you can do, some good kind of tips for that are training programs. And we are spending a lot of time and effort and money right now developing training programs specifically for um, nonprofits about utilization of artificial intelligence, how to do it safely, ethically, and efficiently into their organization. You know, train your staff on how to use these tools. Train your staff on what it is. You don't have to be an AI engineer and know everything there is about AI to benefit from the tool itself. Uh, a Thank lot you of us for that permission because it, it's <laughs> a little daunting at times. And it is a large thing, but you should also start small and then kind of scale up. You know, when you do get that buy-in and you get that decision from your organization or from your organization leaders and you start executing on incorporating AI and AI tools, start small. Don't set a goal to completely do AI everything on your first try. Um, there are going to be things that you didn't plan that happen. There are going to be um, instances, you know, AI sometimes is hard for humans to follow the decisions that it makes. And we see this when we're training our models and things, right? It will return a response or return an action. And we're like, huh, that was unexpected. But we're also like, I'm not entirely sure how it got there. And that's kind of the the one of the more you know areas to be cautious about AI, because we have to at least have a good understanding of how it's getting to the decisions or how it's getting to the thoughts. I say thoughts, right? Uh, we'll put air quotes on those, um, that it's getting to. And so if you start small and build up, you'll be able to also iterate on those and kind of fine tune that. So we, as unexpected things like that occur, you'll be able to address them and account for them in future iterations. Um, right. and, and I would say the most important thing, you know, Training programs, absolutely essential. And those are included in subscriptions to the Nonprofits HQ platform as well. Um, start small, scale up, have a plan of attack. You know, uh, don't just go off and read a Google blog and it says AI does everything. So now it does everything. It's great. Um, but the most important thing I would say is collaboration and knowledge sharing. And platforms like the Nonprofit Show are a great place for that. Because as we 
start bringing in AI and these like high tech things into the nonprofit space, we can all learn from each other what that experience was adopting that, how we implemented it, how we deployed it, uh, what tools we used while doing that. And if we share and collaborate with those tools, we can all learn from each other, learn about how to do it safely, how to do it efficiently, and how to do it inexpensively. AI can be very expensive. And that's why we have companies focused specifically on that. You know, we spend a lot of money maintaining and training and deploying AI models for our customers and a lot of time doing that. But the benefit of that is organizations, especially smaller nonprofit organizations, are able to sign up and use the benefit of that AI. They're able to bring that into their organization to become more efficient, to streamline their processes, uh, to automate all of their tasks to do all of these really cool things without having to be experts in the area, without having to uh, learn a ton of different uh, computer science-y terms and foundations. Um, and then we take that and make all of our learnings and things public, and share it with our community because that's going to be the best way we do this. No organization, no nonprofit organization is exactly the same. So the way they bring in tools like AI and other tech, the way they use them, the way they deploy them, configure them, customize them, whatever it is that they're doing is going to be different. So if we can kind of bring all of that information together, then we can really bring tech like AI to a prominent space in the nonprofit sector. And lots of people can benefit from that, not just the people working at the organizations, but the people that you're serving in your communities. Yeah, the, the community members really reap the benefits. Um, I, I want to give a shout out to to one of our viewers, Margaret uh, Brazda Poirier. If you've not met her, Zach, I would love to make an introduction. Uh, she talks a lot about AI as well in LinkedIn, but she makes a comment here that says, I'm amazed at the number of nonprofits not, in all capital letters, using AI. Uh, she's really seen statistics, you know, anywhere from only 5% to 30% of 30% of nonprofits that are using generative AI. Um, and by the way, uh, Zach, she also said, I just sent Zach a, a LinkedIn request. So you've got that awesome. in your box right now. That's the power of the nonprofit show and being live. Um, to that point and to, Mar to what Margaret's saying, Zach, I'm curious, what is often the first AI adoption that you're seeing, um, you know, nonprofits on your platform gravitating to? Like, what is that one thing that they're like, okay, for me to start out, I'm going to take this little nugget and I'm going to implement this. What are you seeing as that first nugget of implementation? Definitely. Yeah. So our platform is kind of, it's an all-inclusive platform between the tech and the people. So we supplement the right. operations um, as well. So it's all included there. But what the organizations that we're talking to, I mean, the first thing we we often hear is, what AI? That's crazy. We're not going to have, it's going to take over. It's going to steal our data. Data is going to leak, right? All of those privacy and security concerns. And once we get past those, what people are super interested in, at least from our experience in talking to our customers, is that kind of automation, right? The Those more tangible things that you can very visually see and you can notice in your time. You know, I do, I spend 10 hours a week generating these reports. Well, now I don't have to do that. And I still have those quality reports. So that's what our customers, uh, at least for us, that's what our customers have been really interested in. But it's also been interesting because, you know, when we talk about AI in other areas, it's generally a let's do this, let's roll fast, let's let's do this. But when we talk about AI with our nonprofit customers and, and connections and partners, it's kind of like, well, that's a little scary. It sounds expensive. It sounds hard. Um, and you know, let's we, pump the brakes. That's, that's what I hear. <laughs> exactly. And so we actually, as a company had to learn how to talk to other nonprofits and people in that space about okay. AI as well, because that's one of the biggest hurdles that we've discovered for this industry. It's like you bring up AI and people think, you know, Skynet, people think, uh, you know, these big robotic wars that are going to take over the um, world and, and, you know, and, you know, I don't, I can't predict the future, right? I, it's not going to happen in my lifetime. I can pretty much guarantee that. But it's like, if we use it responsibly and we use it ethically, we can do a lot of really good things with it. 
Um, and I think that's something that makes it worth it. You know, there are risks for using and developing AI, but the good to me outweighs those risks. And I think I was rambling there, Jarrett, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm right along there with you. You know, one of the things that, and I'm watching the clock and, and I know we could talk for, for hours, Zach, I am so fascinated and kudos to you and the team for building in nonprofit law and compliance and, the, you know, the ethical side of this into your platform, because that is when we think of donors and we think of transparency and we think of, you know, how we're using supporters dollars that is so critical, right? And I do think that's, and maybe I'm I'm aging myself by saying pump the brakes, but I feel like that is probably the biggest reason why a lot of nonprofit professionals and board members will say, we're not like, we're going to let somebody else try that first. We'll get on the bandwagon in a, in a couple of years. <laughs> Let's let them Absolutely. play with it before we jump on. So I just, again, like kudos to you. Thank you to our mutual connection for connecting us. Um, I, I'm really curious. So I've not been on your platform. What does that look like for nonprofits that are interested? Do you have um, a trial version? Do you have a walkthrough version? Like what's accessible for us to start dipping our toe into this? Definitely. Yeah. So um, you can visit our website and see we're actually deploying a new super fancy cool website in the next few days, uh, which breaks things down. But you can request a demo that way. You can also hit me on LinkedIn and just shoot a message if there's something that is um, useful for you or for your organization. That's great. So the way we kind of approach this is learning about our organizations, scheduling a um, tailored demo to show them the parts of the platform that they care about or they care most about, and, and then also gathering feedback. You know, we yeah. we built this thing to be impactful and useful to our customers. So if it's not impactful or useful to a particular customer, tell us why. Tell us what would make it useful to you. And you know what? We'll probably build it. You know, uh, the uh, the things like that are, are really easy to do. And it's really that um, it's really that connection that we're creating. The tech is there. It's great. The professional services are there. They're great. But it's that connection that we're creating with our customers. Um, but yeah, so to, to kind of dip into that, we can get uh, demos done. Uh, we've recorded several customized demos and sent them to customers, just whatever kind of fits best for the organization. Um, yeah. Well, Zach, thank you. Um, I, I also want to say, you know, I really appreciate your passion in this space, but overall your professionalism, I can see that it's, you've really, you and your team have taken this to heart again, you know, you were looking for a place to do more good and to help other people do more good. This seems like a great path for you and so glad to have you in our sector. Uh, for those of you watching and listening, you've just heard from Zach Brown, CEO of Nonprofits HQ. Check out their website. That's Nonprofits hq.com. Um, I know I'm interested in, in scheduling, you know, a tutorial to learn how this is working. I'm still, you know, we're still un unpacking all of this AI. So glad to have a fellow nerd, a fellow nonprofit nerd with me today, Zach. Um, thank you. This was amazing. Um, thank you so much for the invitation. And like, I can nerd out on this stuff and talk for hours and hours and hours. So if anybody else wants to continue the conversation, definitely let's connect. Um, we can, we can, we can definitely do this. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And I want to say thank you to Julia again. She had this brilliant idea, um, almost four years ago now to, to bring up the nonprofit show as a national live broadcast. So we are going strong every single weekday. I'm Jarrett Ransom, nonprofit nerd. Again, huge shout out of gratitude to our amazing partners that allow us to bring in thought leaders like Zach today. Shout out to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, your part-time controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. Zach, we love getting so many amazing leaders in our space to come in and uh, bring conversations. One of the things Julia was worried about early in the show, uh, not this show, but when we started was we're going to run out of topics. Well, guess what? We haven't yet. The topics continue to evolve. So thank you for bringing this version of AI um, as it continues to advance. And for all of you that have joined us today, again, thank you. As we sign off today, as we do every day, we end with the same mantra. And Zach, I know you've got a big move coming up. So 
This one's for you, my friend. It's to stay well so you can do well. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you all back here tomorrow.